fun. Um, if you can just share where you're from, uh, what you focus on, and just something fun that you're working on that, that will kick us off. So I'll have, I'll have you start, start. Tina. Yeah. Uh, my name is Tina Lindahl. Uh, I'm running my own business called Skillex. I am a social selling expert and LinkedIn expert, uh, and I focus on helping businesses to increase their brand on LinkedIn. Uh, and also their personal brand. Um, I'm pushing more towards human to human than business to business, uh, enabling people to just use the platform LinkedIn uh, as a sales and marketing uh, platform and also working with employer branding. Something that I am really proud of is that I am, uh, through my own content and presence on LinkedIn, attracting a lot of executive women uh, to work with me. Uh, women who not necessarily don't think that they have a place uh, on the platform to share their knowledge and their expertise. So I'm super proud of that, that that's what my content um, is, is uh, enabling and attracting. That's really great. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I'm going to move it on down the line with, the, with you, Veronica. Hello? Better, yeah, yep. I'm Veronica, I'm from Svenska Messan Gotia Towers, the Swedish Exhibition and Congress Center and Gotia Towers. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of a background because I'm not sure how many of you are actually familiar with what we do. The exhibition part of our organization is a little bit more than 100 years old. We're still located like 500 meters from here in that direction. Uh, up until two years ago, um, the hotel side of the business and the exhibition side of the business were two separate entities. But in 2017, they were merged into uh, one company structure. So that means that today we have approximately 40 brands within our house, 30 uh, trade show uh, brands. We have two hotels, five public restaurants, a spa, uh, and some shops as well. So how so. many of you are just tired hearing that? <laughs> <laughs> Should I stop? Uh, so what we're doing now is that we're actually identifying how we can use or utilize uh, the synergies that we have in-house, uh, both when it comes to uh, synergies between business areas, but also when it comes to uh, cross-functional uh, kind of working, but not least when it comes to communication. Uh, to create additional uh, experience value for our visitors. Okay, thank you so much. And Ulrika, I'll have you. Uh, I'll have you go next and talk about. I know you've been uh, similar to Tina, but just not on LinkedIn. You focus on social media. So if you can introduce yourself and talk a little bit more about that. Yes, I uh, um, social media manager at Bloomslandet, and uh, as most. Marketers and social media managers, it, I, we also find it difficult to cut through the noise and to reach the right audience. And at Blomsterland, we were early ad uh, adapters of um, uh, communicating with the customers um, um, in different ways. Um, and because of Many of our followers and customers are, uh, need help with their gardening or expertise help for their plants. We, that's exactly what we give them. So we have um, a team of gardeners that are ready answering questions, even at the weekends. Um, and we have a live chat once a week and also um, you can also um, ask questions on the website. And um, we, we uh, engage with every single comment on Facebook and Instagram. It's hard work with all these hearts and likes, but uh, we do, even if it's a competition with 500 comments, we, we do that. And uh, that... Um, in um, 
the reason why we do that is because we, we get very, very good relationship with the customers and they, they, um, they see that we care and that we actually uh, give them a helping hand, like we hold their hand towards uh, when before they buy the plant and even after, so that they can succeed. And um, so um, we get to know, know the audience and we get to know what they want. And in that, that can also give us um, uh, the possibility to, um, to post even better content. And, um, to, uh, and it's working really well, even on the or organic posts, which is very difficult this way, these, these days. Thank you so much. And Eva, I'm going to have you talk about what you're working on, what you're uh, particularly excited or proud about as well. Okay. So, uh, oh, I, I think if you if you talk, we'll hold. Is it okay? Oh, there oops. Go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so my name is Eva Schelleskog, and I work with the commercial PR at Lisbeth, uh, with all our different seasons and products within the Lisbeth brand. Um, and we also have a mission from our owners, uh, Gothenburg City, that Leesburg should be for everyone. So that is uh, a real challenge, uh, choosing your audiences. Uh, but right now we're in the middle of the Halloween season, and Halloween is always super fun to work with because people either love or hate horror. Um, so we did a really, uh, we had a good, really good premiere. Uh, with a lot of uh, media coverage uh, around our new horror house, uh, Skogen, the forest, which was uh, super exciting. Um, we also just yesterday released that we uh, will have the show Mamma Mia the Party uh, at Rondo, our show venue, next fall. Uh, and we had a really uh, cool co press conference to, uh, yesterday. So I got to meet uh, Björn Ulvias from ABBA, which was really cool. Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. That's really great. Uh, now I, I know that each of you have such different brands and also such different focuses, but I, I want to ask how you're really focusing on storytelling and how you can draw out those stories. Whether it is Tina on on LinkedIn and helping those executives, you know, really present their personal brand and their personal story, or you know, Veronica you have so many brands uh, how do you select those stories and and again you know Ulrika on on social media how do you have that shine through because I know you focus a lot on on content and not the selling part of it and again you know with Eva you have so many things going on how do you choose the stories that you tell and how do you make those resonate so I'll go first yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, to me, stories is everything. Stories sell. It's how we make connections with other people and it's how we build uh, a community and it's how we attract our tribe. Um, and the more we share our stories, um, the quicker we are able to build that community and tribe. So for me, um, when it comes to my own content creation on LinkedIn, um, I share a lot of stories in regards to how I um, help my customers. Um, and I always make sure that I use the, uh, the strength of social media, which is you can be personal, um, which is great, but on LinkedIn, which is the biggest business network in the world, there's also a demand for you to be professional. So I make sure that I kind of uh, sway um, and I uh, offer a lot of um, uh, pieces of a puzzle to who I am as a person and I connect that to my knowledge. And that's what I help my customers with. And it's all roles within a business. Uh, they're all equally important, no matter what you do in a business. But what's important is um, who um, is the, uh, what's the word? Um, the people, the force that actually is the base of a, a company um, to make them come alive. Uh, so for me, storytelling is uh, essential. It's how we make real connections. <coughs> It plays up on that authenticity yes. that, that Evan was talking about earlier. Yeah, and also to encourage people that you are of value and that your story is unique. Uh, a lot of people think like, oh, who am I to tell someone about this? Uh, and I encourage everyone to just try, 
tell that story, share your um, um, your area of expertise, or share a win or a loss, and see what happens. The more human we are uh, on social media, uh, the better for the business and the brand. That's really wonderful. Thank you. And and Veronica, I I kind of want to almost point uh, an additional uh, question with with uncovering stories and and telling uh, your story because not only do you have so many brands um, that are now under the same roof, but you're looking at you know highlighting things like sustainability initiatives and the technology that you're using even throughout the process. Um, how does that affect your storytelling process? Very good question. Um, <clears throat> we're not there yet, <laughs> so to be honest, I mean, we're talking about being truthful. Uh, it's a journey. What we do have, I mean, there are two sides of it, because I'm working at a corporate level, which in this case means corporate level, I'm, um, I'm not in 40 different brands telling them how to manage their PR initiatives. Um, um, I can always be a support, but I think it's very important to actually be close to the individual brand and also know the customer base close to that individual brand. I mean, if we have, we talk about customer journeys a lot and we have very different customers coming to us. They're either exhibitors, they're conference uh, participants, uh, as yourselves today. Uh, they're here to um, celebrate an anniversary. They're, they're coming to our place for lunch. I mean, we have very different uh, relationships with our customers. So I think it's very important that when you work with storytelling, it also needs to be honest and, and uh, genuine. So it needs to be close to the brands. And that's where we have our marketing department working, I mean, in projects close to the specific brands. When it comes to corporate level, we have uh, eight different focus areas. Uh, there are strategic focus areas for the corporation. And I'm working specifically with three of them, which is sustainability, um, digitalization or innovation, and uh, globalization. Because those three topics, so to say, they go through the entire organization. Uh, all, I mean, both uh, horizontal and vertical. So uh, when it comes to st sustainability, for instance, we receive quite a lot of media coming to our facilities. We're giving them tours. They're experiencing the food at Upper House, for instance, the organic side of our business. Um, so yeah, I think that's what we can do on a corporate level to, to kind of see those clusters or focus areas and how you can work with them and touching base in the different brands, but also horizontally throughout the organization. That's interesting. So there, you're getting you're getting people involved and in, in championing those stories as well. But then I hear definitely an element of um, of what Sophie brought up earlier of providing those experiences, and that kind of plays on you know the that neuropsychology and and tapping into emotions and really getting people passionate. Most definitely. I mean, we're in we're very much into the people business. <laughs> Where I come from, that's our core business. Uh, and here we're talking about technology and digitalization, and um, they're not mutually uh, exclusive. I think you need both, but you need to know that, I mean, we have one digital generation and we've been on this planet as uh, homo sapiens for 200,000 years. So I would say we're native social. So how we meet is even more important now than ever. That's a great point. That's really great. Thank you. Uh, Ulrika, with, with you, you put such a focus, um, especially what's interesting too, I'd like to almost kind of uh, compare or contrast it a little bit. You know, Tina focuses so much on LinkedIn. I know you've had a lot of really great success, not only through your website where you can answer questions, but you've had a lot of success also on Facebook. Um, what, how do you look for kind of those stories or, or play off of those stories when you share content as well? Well, as your con, like you, you know, you're having those conversations with people online or on your social media feeds. How how I, like, sorry. How, how do you pull those? How do you pull those stories out or, or play with them? Do you make them part of your of your content? Then do you share like customer stories and and, and how do you <coughs> how does that look? For you because they're so involved and they're so grateful um, that you're providing that you know and your gardeners are providing that expertise but how do you how do you really play off of those stories uh, we uh, 
we we usually chat to them in in messenger uh that's where if if they ask ask a question on on uh, the wall then we uh have the conversation on on uh, messenger and uh then we have can have quite uh, personal questions about their gardening and what they want and uh uh also on on instagram is is uh, even better to pick up what what um the cus customers want because then they tag you with uh, with blomslandet and uh so on instagram you can pick up micro influencers that's really good to work with to work with someone who really likes your brand rather than likes your money like <laughs> because that's uh, influences that um that um c can give us a lot of um information about uh, new trends uh, young people older people and uh, also because uh, Sweden is when it's spring in the south of Sweden it's still winter in the north so uh, we can get a lot of instant uh content from um like pictures and and photos that we can share um so there's lots happening also on uh, messenger and in in the uh, mess pms uh, within the instagram as well so you can get quite personal uh, really and pick up lots of good information that's really neat and yeah. that and that highlights definitely i think you know what you were speaking to earlier uh tina and then even you know when you followed up veronica and just talking about the importance of being social and those personal connections but i love how you highlighted that you know the some of those stories can be visual in nature right a simple mm. a simple picture on instagram can tell you so much about what's to come and what your customers like mm. um but that's a really great point as well mm. so thank you for that and and Eva with with you I know that there's you know you you premiered a new ride um you know now you have Halloween how does that storytelling look when you have these big uh areas of excitement versus you know maybe areas where it's in between you know is maybe in between a season or you know after you premiere a ride how do you keep that excitement going with your stories um I think because uh we work a lot with storytelling in the amusement park in different areas and with stories around the ride so our latest ride Valkyria um has a whole story background story um that is inspires the whole area and the the queuing area and everything um so it gives the the guest uh that whole experience when they actually are with us <laughs> uh or in the park uh, and of course that gives us um something to easy use uh or yeah it, especially in social media to actually uh engage with or yeah engage with our followers uh and tell the story there of course that's perfect yeah. thank you thank you so much and i i want to um i want to hit a little bit on i know we've talked a little bit about the um social media and how it's uh how you know especially user generated content um but i wanted to ask a few of you so tina especially with you um do you have any specific tips that you can give or or advice that you might share for using linkedin to make those more personal connections and to tell your story i know you kind of touched upon it a little bit yeah. but you know what are what are some of your biggest pieces of advice well um i often have to present um the idea of perspective to people when i talk about linkedin because a lot of people just go oh but it's just a of the cv kind of recru recruiting kind of place but it's not uh it's nowadays the world's biggest uh business network uh online and it would be a shame if all of us here today would not take our rightful place uh onto that platform and a lot of people are very shy um to do that because they think oh, i don't want to brag or i don't want to break yante uh i don't want to tell someone that i'm good at something and i often just uh, ask back like you were hired for a position based on an ad often where they're looking for a superhuman and that person is you you got the job through recommendations or perhaps through the ad why would you not share 
all your experiences, your personality, your values, what makes you capable of doing a great job in your position today, why would you not share that on LinkedIn? That increases your brand immensely, but it also increases the company's brand tenfold. And imagine if it's not only you doing it for the company, but 10 of you. And what about if it's management? So that's how I kind of encourage uh, the, the, uh, all the people that I meet. <laughs> I try to speak about this all the time. Um, to just take their rightful place um, onto the platform by just sharing more of what's um, common to them and what's like everyday knowledge and everyday tasks. Share that. That's useful content and it's attracting your tribe and your customers. I have a few additional questions from the audience that are that are about about LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, one of them is talking, especially because you mentioned um, that you're doing a lot of work and promoting uh, women on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, but you know, a, a, an audience member uh, brought up that you know a lot of uh, a lot of LinkedIn and, and the professional a lot of the professional industries are are unequal in gender ways. And so, what can you what can we all do to make it more open for women and more welcoming for women. The second part of that question, or I'm going to add on a second question, is um, how how influential are your profiles and, and what you put forward, you talk about your brand, yeah. to getting hired and to getting those jobs? Yeah. So the first one, I guess it would be um, just uh, if, if, if you see someone in your network, and if it's a woman who's trying to share her knowledge and try to uh, create engagement in her network, an easy way to just show that you're there and that you support this person is to just engage in the content so that that per person gets reach and engagement from others. So also that person can show other women and men, for that instance, um, that it's okay um, to take uh, a stand onto this platform and to share uh, your knowledge. So on LinkedIn, as in any social media, media you need uh, reach and you need engagement. That's kind of a receipt to show that what you're doing is of value. So if you want to promote more women around you, I would suggest to start engaging and encouraging um, the women who actually, and men, who actually take, like who create posts, because it is a push for a lot of people to just say something uh, onto the platform. So just be, just be nice and be encouraging. Uh, uh, See, I'm kind of anti the like movement. Uh, I want you to comment more. Um, I want you to show your network why you think someone is inspirational or educational or uh, motivational or um, someone is provoking you. Use your words. I mean, all of you in here are quite executive, I would say. Um, you have stuff to say and uh, you have experience. So that's the question to uh, answer, the question number one. And the second one, the profile, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, the profile is more important than most people think. Um, LinkedIn has given you so much room and opportunity to present who you are to your network. Uh, your, your profile is searched word optimized, um, so you want to push in as many words connected to your area of expertise as possible. It's also the one thing that just lies there 365 days a year working for you. And if you start engaging also on LinkedIn by commenting others' posts, and you maybe you find an, a hashtag uh, or a search word that's uh, in connection with your area of expertise, and you sound professional and knowledgeable in that area, people will go and look at your profile to see who is this person who's so clever, who's so likable, who's so inspirational. And if you haven't done like your homework and really uh, put out a nice profile that's actually displaying the essence of you, then that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess to give a little plug to uh, to buy break talks, I think there's already quite a bit of of uh, stuff under the hashtag on LinkedIn. Yeah. So you can check it out. And you can be you can start to be part of the conversation there. Well, today is a great it. day to build your personal brand <laughs> and also to build a company brand. There is a hashtag going on on LinkedIn. It's hashtag buy break talks. 
um, if you just engage in that hashtag and maybe tell your network or your community what you're learning here today. Just only that little piece of content, just that to push through to your community to show how you're engaging to learn more or how to network or um, how you're creating business opportunities. It's a small little step, but it's, it can get it really... It can get you far. Yeah, it yeah. can. Try. Which is fantastic. So there's and a like, challenge. Yeah. And no, like, no, I'm going to say it's a, it's a challenge. If you're not going to challenge them, I'm going to challenge you. Yeah, I'm going to challenge you to, to put something <laughs> on LinkedIn today to kind of test that out, to test out your, your personal brand, to build your personal brand. Yeah. Uh, because this is a, the place to do it. It's yeah. a place to share. Yeah. And I also just want to, Evan, uh, where is Evan? Is he in here? No. Uh, well, he said that like it's social media. You put something up there, if you feel like, oh my goodness, kill me, this is so embarrassing or I'm out of my comfort zone, remove it. Remove it and then you're safe. But try. Ante, ante. Perfect. Thank you very much. This is uh, an audience question for Veronica and Eva. Um, I'm also going to add in a little um, a second part question as well. Um, so this person is asking how important is the knowledge of the Swedish language for people working in uh, with communication in your organizations because you work internationally. I would add a second part to it is how do you send messages um, when you have such a such a diverse audience? Um, you know, you have uh, different uh, different backgrounds, different you know uh, international folks coming to visit. Uh, Veronica, you talked about just even for the different people, uh, perhaps from your restaurant to um, to actually coming to a show is even you know those are different. Um, and you, Eva, talked about people like loving horror or hating horror, and those. Those are two very different groups of people. How do you how do you cater to those, whether they're international or or beyond? Well, I mean, I think the the key is to direct different messages to different audiences, uh, but still do it with the same uh, voice from your brand. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know, Veronica. Um, I agree. Was the question whether it's important to know Swedish? Or oh. So the, the first question was how important the Swedish language is when, when you're working, uh, I being international and having international crowds. And then I added in a more difficult o overview. <laughs> no, but I agree, of course, you need to uh, think of the receiver uh, no matter what or, or who that person is or, or how that person came to your to your. Um, or came to your brand or, or your, your house, <laughs> in, in our case. Uh, I think that we have, I don't have the statistics about, you know, who are coming from abroad and who is Swedish. I would say maybe a 50-50 split or something like that. Um, we definitely need to, I mean, we have a vision that's becoming um, the most attractive meeting place in Northern Europe for overall experiences. Um, if that's your vision, you need to walk the talk for sure. Um, so yeah, you need to be an international player today. I mean, whatever you write on LinkedIn or whatever social media you have, it's for everyone to see. Uh, so you, you need to leverage that. Do you do both of you end up uh, catering messages both in Swedish then in English? And then do those messages change or are they mostly just uh, translated? when you're working maybe with journalists or or even sometimes with social media content? I think for, I mean, catering for media, I think for sure, uh, we're trying to, to use English as our uh, main language, uh, not least when it comes to the focus areas that I talked about and sustainability. I mean, that's on everyone's agenda today and also uh, technology. Uh, and the media visits that we have, we had CNN Travels the other week, we had GQ Magazine this summer, we had New York Times. I mean, for sure, you need to, if you want to be an international player, you need to be out there. Yeah, I agree. Um, for us, it's, I think, maybe 5 to 7% of our visitors are international. So for us, it's mostly Swedish, actually. Um, but... Uh, Still, I think if your question was if the messages were uh, different or just translated, I think they're definitely uh, different because for us, we're also um, 
I mean, we have a vision of being an international travel destination, of course, but we're also very local. Um, we're also very much um, Gothenburg. <laughs> so, and I mean, in Gothenburg, we have this local context for our messages um, that aren't really uh, easy to translate into uh, English and just send it out to international journalists. That wouldn't really work for us. And this, this question, I think, is for, um, for all of you, whoever would like to answer it. Um, this question comes from uh, Hannah in the audience. Uh, she asks what the most challenging aspect is when dealing with an increasing onslaught of news, um, updates, and information. Like you're just living in seas, we're all living in seas of news and content all over. So um, especially given, uh, like Evan talked about earlier, that the attention span of most consumers is so short today, what do you find most challenging about, about getting attention with that sea of information? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree with Hanna. Uh, we are constantly bombarded with um, with news and information from from various channels. I think it's important to to choose where you find that your voice is true and where you have your target group. Um, and also, I think some of the speakers beforehand talked about authenticity, uh, to just add that extra layer onto everything that you do. This is very out of a Swede's comfort zone to be that maybe transparent and honest and uh, authentic because we think, what if someone says that we have a bad opinion? Uh, shoot me. So I think you can, um, you can uh, stand out a lot by um, choosing to um, just encourage that, that voice of yours and uh, uh, to also connect that with knowledge, like what knowledge do you have to push your company forward uh, or your mission forward, whatever your, your mission is. Um, but to add on that extra layer of, of personality and charm and, and uh, wit, like to be funny. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it, it definitely it works for Klarna, right? It works for Klarna. It works for Klarna. Yes. If it's good enough for Klarna, it's good I'll enough it. for yeah. you. I'll I would like copy. to submit that, Chris, to your next campaign. I think that's a smooth idea. If it's good enough for Klarna, it's good enough for <laughs> you. <laughs> you can take that as you will. <laughs> but just to add to that. What you're saying as well, um, I mean, we're talking about this before today as well. Uh, neuroscience and everything. I mean, we all know the phenomena of brain fatigue, for instance, and, and all the messages that we're constantly meeting every day. I think someone said the Sunday DN paper contains more information than a person living in the 18th century was subjected to throughout their life. So, I mean, I think um, no wonder that, you know, we can't stand reading anymore. We listen to books. We don't have the energy to type, so we use voice. <laughs> so everything uh, is to simplify for us because uh, we, we're not really there. It took 200,000 years for us to, to become one generation native digital. So uh, simpli simplification and being honest, I think those are two, two, two good ways to go. And that's a, a fascinating look too. I think that plays into, like you said, the, the customer experience is not just making your message simple, but making it simple for the listener or the reader or whoever it is to, to make it more simplified. Um, Eva and Ulrika, do you have any uh, thoughts on that? How do you, how do you stand out? And I, I'm going to toss it to Ulrika, you first, especially because there is another question on here talking about Facebook and other social media declining. Uh, you have a really great thing that I hope you can talk about briefly um, and the group that you're reaching on Facebook that you've noticed. It's, it's a little bit opposite to what Evan talked about earlier, um, but it, how do you kind of use that? Who are you reaching and how are you standing out on social media? Yeah, uh, on Facebook, um, we reach um, target um, audience 55 plus which is a very important group for us. And uh, they, they love Facebook and uh, it's working really well. And they, uh, if we um, 
post something saying happy weekend, they some of them answer with happy weekend view to you as well. <laughs> and they can uh, post a picture, uh, a photo from their home and this is my evening and this is my plant, which is so fantastic. It's so, so lovely. And so, yeah, for the audience 55 plus, it's, Facebook is still working, but you have to work with your audience. You have to be there for them. And, and if there is a complaint, then you have to answer and be transparent and maybe even they can make a change. Like um, if, if it's a plant that's not good for cats, if they're cat, you have to, you have to actually answer and, and, and say that, well, okay, we'll put the sign up somewhere or something. Uh, and then we have an audience, um, younger audience on Instagram which is um, even from 15 years old and uh, to 45 something. Um, and they're, uh, they're generally interested in, in gardening and, and plants. Um, and just uh, they're engaging much quicker, but you can, you can tell that they're, um, uh, that they're clicking on, on the image, even if they don't engage with likes so much, they, they, they still see your um, content. So, uh, but you have to post, you have to be so careful with what to post and uh, to analyze, analyze, analyze and constantly changing and uh, not be on all the platforms like we are not on, on Snapchat because our customers are not there. So don't worry, you don't have to be everywhere. Be good where you are and uh, take your time, but be, be good. And if you have a story to tell, then tell it. That's great. Yeah. I mean, that's great for all of us. Sometimes yeah. it's easy to get overwhelmed to think that we have to mm. be on everything or, or grab all of the headlines. Um, and that, so that's, it's good to, to be good at, at where you're at. And, and also, I think, uh, use the uh, website as your hub like to ha to have lots of content on your website as well is like uh, whether it's white papers or a blog post or or an article or anything that's also because that's going to be there uh, searchable so and um, okay. can yeah. I add yeah. on to that of course um, and also to add uh, to use all the content that's already there yes like most of you have websites and there some of them are filled with um, uh, white papers and uh, there's often quite uh, quite often like a link which says about us and you have little stories about each member of the the company uh, there is information about products and services i mean content is there it's for you to pick and choose what do i need to talk about on whatever platform, uh, and you just try to use the content that's been provided to you by someone else and just put your little own touch uh, onto it for the platform of your choice. Because um, I, I find that a lot of people, they have in the whole ongest content anxiety. <laughs> like, what should I post and what's relevant and what's unique? Use the things that's already been created uh, and just put your own touch to it. And change the photo, just and change, use yeah. a different photo. Or yeah. Yeah, then you can use it Yeah, again. you can use it in, in several different platforms. Yeah. And repurpose. That, that It's also a smart thing for budget as well. Yeah. Yeah, to, to re reuse that. Um, also, I know that we're, we're kind of drawing to a close here, but there is an interesting question that an audience member posed. Um, I'd love to pose to all of you. Um, so they asked them the more, so, they, you know, you talked about the more human you are on social media, the, the better it is for your brand. Um, but what does human mean? Like, how can we, how can we, like, especially with a brand, like, how would you define that? And how can you, you know, you talked about better obtaining it, but let's, let's kind of explain it a little bit more and, and, and label it for all of you. And that might mean something different too. Mm. Maybe that's the way that you uh, build relationships with journalists. Mm. Um, maybe that's the way that you put content out there. Uh, but what, what, I guess what does being human mean for your brand and for your efforts? 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I think that um, also speaking about the future uh, of brands, I think it's uh, important to be, uh, I mean, we're talking about value, um, oh, value-based brands. And I think that's um, usually based in, in humanity <laughs> somehow. I mean, um, to use what your brand stands for uh, in your communication somehow. Uh, even if it's, I mean, it could be the people behind the the brand, the company, or um, yeah, uh, taking a stand for different uh, issues. Yeah, um, I'd like to add on uh, j just the realization that you are not the equivalents of your products or services. You are also a person that's being able to either produce these products or market them or sell them or uh, engage your network with your products and services. Uh, for me, the definition of human is also to share on social media how you are contributing as a person to the launch of something or to the product development or something or the strategy of something. Why are you uh, the specialist and the expert in your company um, to add that human element? So you not only talk about products and services that your company is providing, because that's boring to follow. Uh, if you can add an element of how you're contributing with who you are as a person, and then you choose. Do you want to add your values? Do that. Do you want to add your personality? Do that. Like, it's social media. Uh, the more you are biosig, um, <laughs> the better. If you want to add Snoop Dogg, do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's my take on being human. And for us in, in the experience industry, it's very much the actual experience to be truthful when, I mean, you talk about the experience to come, but when you're actually on site, what do you deliver? And that needs to be in correlation to one another, otherwise they will see through you. So be very authentic uh, on site as well in the experience. That's a great point. All right, well, we could definitely talk with you all day, could we not? Yes. You, like yes. Party yes. I love <laughs> she, she wants to invite you to more parties. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you will come back for more parties. But in the meantime, please, let's give our panelists a big round of applause.